Da, 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 da. My name is Gourmi. I made a tapeshala ten years ago with Memi Yutok, a man from my village. I remember the morning when Memi Yutok came with his son Nima to seal the agreement. Memi Yutok paid me 500 rupees for one of my mares, and he agreed to share the colts with me. We decided that the firstborn would be for his son, Nima. After showing the mare to my friend, I blessed it with some butter. This blessing brings good luck to the horse and its future owner. According to the tradition, Memi Yutak brings a jar of alcohol, because here, empty hands and empty mouths mean empty promises. Finally, so as not to lose my own good luck, I symbolically carry out the last rites of the tapeshala. A year later, a baby was born. According to the custom, Memi Yutok baptized the young mother and her infant with a white scarf. Today, the horse is 10 years old, and he has just been given to Nima as a wedding present. Nima lives in Jarkat, an old stone village perched on a rocky 3,700 meter high peak where the scenery hasn't changed for centuries. We are in Mustang, to the west of the Himalayan mountain chain, a little known enclave of Tibetan culture in Nepal. Until 1991, it was a secret territory. The people here named their land Montang, which means the mountain plain. The Mustang horse has a special way of trotting. It's called ambling. Whether it's trotting or walking, the horse lifts its two legs on the same side of its body at the same time. In the high mountains, it's much more comfortable for the rider. Nima takes his horse to the racetrack in Jarkat very often to train it. While his young wife weaves a belt, Nima learns the art and the healing powers of plants from his father, who is a doctor. The Amzis, or medical doctors, are very respected here. 
They pour through Tibetan medical books going back 300 years, in which the remedies are carefully described in detail. Our region contains a great variety of the plants needed to make these remedies. During the three-month monsoon period, there is a great deal of activity on the terraces. The mustangis dry the hay. Once dry, it is baled and stored. It will be used to feed the horses during the long, hard winter. This little kingdom was part of Tibet until the 14th century, before becoming an independent dynasty. Later, it was annexed by Nepal, but it has preserved its Tibetan culture. The Mustang comes alive in July with the monsoon. Until October, all of nature is in bloom. Today, Nima is going to the village of Purang to see Sona Tsering, one of Mustang's best veterinarians. He wants his horse to be immunized against certain diseases. Purang is a little village above Jharkhat, a quarter of an hour away on horseback. Sona Tsering is the keeper of one of the great Mustang treasures. The Book of the Mysterious Prince of Jharkhat is a masterpiece containing 89 hand-painted pages. It contains the secrets of horse pharmacology, hippiatry, the art of caring for horses, and the different magical and divining formulas. It's the only medical book dealing with horses in the Mustang. Mm. 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 Mm.
At this time of year, horses have a tendency to eat too much humid grass. This creates an inflammation of the tongue and the animal can choke to death as a result. Sona Tsering shows Nima how to bleed the horse under the tongue to reduce the swelling. Pressing on the nostrils is a way of checking the animal's health. Then the veterinarian designates the precise acupuncture points on the horse's head he will use to immunize him. He reassures Nima that the animal will not suffer. This type of acupuncture is only practiced in Mustang and prevents a number of diseases. Sona Tsering is one of the last veterinarians to use it. To keep the animal calm, the veterinarian burns aromatic plants. The horse seems to like the smell of pine with its anesthetizing powers. Finally, Sona Tsering gives precious advice to Nima on how to care for his horse better in the future. Nima and the young men of Jarkat train regularly for the big horse shows that take place in Mustang villages once a year. Before training, they have a big breakfast. A Mustang breakfast consists of Tibetan bread, eggs, and chai, which is tea with milk.
Mustangi saddles are both beautiful and original. They're covered with hand-woven rugs made by the women. Each motif is different. On the way to the racetrack are the ruins of the mysterious Prince of Jarkat's castle. The prince left behind him an important equestrian tradition. Training is more like equestrian games than competition. There is no winner here. Enjoying oneself is more important than competing. The little Mustang horse has a lot of character and a highly competitive spirit. He is robust and thanks to his exceptional rib cage, he can carry loads as high up as 5,800 meters. On the advice of his father, Nima has decided to go to the Lupras Monastery to see the last great Lama to know the Larta ritual. It's a ceremony marking the alliance between man and horse, a sacred bond which unites them. As in all Mustang villages, here on the mountainside terraces, buckwheat is grown. The inhabitants harvest the triangular black grains which they use for flour.
Tomorrow is a big day for Nima. He must go to the monastery to have his horse blessed. Sampa Pakla is the only remaining great lama to know the 800-year-old Larta ceremony, which is rooted in Tibetan Lamaism. First, the lama sows the five colors of the creation on the animal's mane. Each color represents one part of the world. They will give the horse good luck and long life. The orange paint symbolizes the face of Dumara, the god of private life. It links the horse to its master, and now only Nima can mount the animal. Finally, the Lama purifies the horse by fumigation and by prayer. He invokes the gods and asks them to protect the animal throughout its life. Mustang equestrian art is at the heart of daily life. It's the cement of a preserved Tibetan culture. Here, the men living on the roof of the world know the true value of a horse.